Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another Nino Kuni Crossworlds video, and today we're going to talk about deck building in this game and about how if you're chasing those really high CP numbers or letting the auto equip feature fill your decks out for you, you're missing out on a lot of efficiency. The auto equip will go for maximum CP. You can make better builds than maximum CP, and I'm going to show you how. Now, first things first, let's find the actual deck builder. It's in character and deck. This is the best way to do your equipment because you have access to equipment, skills, and familiars all on one handy screen. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is weapons. Here's the deal with weapons. When you equip one, whether it's in your main hand, in this case it would be this fire weapon, or one of your sub hands, you get all of these stats, right? So you'll get attack and fire attack up, and you get your awakening effects. In this case, basic attack damage plus 22.5%, which hell yeah, and accuracy rate plus 5%. So I get that from my main hand weapon, but I also get that from my sub hand weapons. I'm going to throw an infograph on the screen here that talks about what I call the core three. The three most important weapons you're going to want to build around in this game. Those are the four star uh, fire, water, and earth weapons. These aren't that like special shiny four star version. This is the basic four star. You will eventually collect these over time. And these are the three you want to build around. Now there are alternatives that we'll talk about here in a minute, both better and worse. But for now, let's focus on these three. The fire weapon, which I just showed you, boosts your auto attack damage. The uh, water boosts your special skill damage. And the earth boosts your basic skill damage. So what does that mean? Basic skills are these. These are the ones you start the game with. These are the ones that like you have three of, you can't swap them out for anything else. And a lot of classes, Destroyer included, get a ton of their DPS from these basic skills. Therefore, the, the earth element, I'm about to say water. Yeah, the earth element, four star base hammer is very important to a destroyer or the four star earth element weapon of whatever your class is will be important to you as well. Special skills are these. These are those ones you can buy. For me, it's like seismic power or shadow disc. The uh, the water four star base weapon will boost these, will boost the damage of these. I have COVID guys. I'm sorry. My words are kind of going away from me, but let's roll on. So if I was doing a fire element build, which is what you kind of see on the screen here, I would want my fire weapon in my main hand and in this case I would probably want to run both of these other four star base weapons but what if I didn't have one in that case I do have another option let's go back to gear and let's take a look at the three star fire hammer this is good for a fire element main hand or for a fire element build as a sub hand weapon for a lot of reasons one, you're not wasting this elemental attack. I would get this attack stat and this fire attack stat by equipping this in slot two or three. I would also get fire attack up plus 7.5%. This is really nice. And in fact, I would make the argument that if it was closer in total like attack, it might be better for me than the special skill damage from the champion's hammer. Now, it's going to reduce my CP a lot. If I equip this thing right here, my CP drops 10,000 points, but I bet you my damage didn't fall off. Uh, my damage might have increased. That fire element attack is going to affect my auto attack skills. It's going to affect my basic skills and my special skills. I think that's a great piece of equipment to run in a sub slot if I have the main slot four star. Now, you will eventually get these, right? And if you're doing a multi or one of the main three element builds, fire, earth, or water, then you just kind of mix and match these three sort of like what I showed. But what if you're doing something like a dark element build or a light element build? In that case, you're going to want to equip whatever your strongest dark weapon is in slot one. In this case, for me, it's the shadow hammer. And then you'll want to equip your two um, boosting weapons in the second slot. In this case, I'm going for basic damage up and I'm going for basic skill damage up. This is the optimal dark build for me right now as someone who does not have a four star base dark hammer. If I did have a really, really powerful four star dark hammer that was like either the four star base one or the shiny four star base one, I could equip that in main slot. And then I could sub slot the darkness attack and accuracy boost in into one of these. So I hope that makes sense about how weapon builds work. Now, 
Let's talk about armor and accessories real briefly next. Some of these do directly um, affect the elemental build. For example, Natrum's earrings have earth attack plus 7.5%. So with a, um, let me go back to my fire build here. Here's number one, this is my fire build. With these earrings in my fire build, I am getting all of these stats, right? HP, accuracy, crit resist, those are really nice, but I'm getting nothing from the extra awakening effect. In this case, if I had an alternative, right? Like let's go to my accessories. I have, for example, this. Fire Familiar Skill Cooldown, minus 5.5%. I need to decide, is it worth me, you know, essentially sacrificing a little bit of stats here for this extra awakening effect? In my opinion, right now it's not, but if I had this thing a little bit stronger, like more duplicates of it, or I five started or something like that, it could be more important to run this instead of the Natrum's earrings, even though these give more CP. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you will also eventually, with your gear, uh, your armor, some armor is very specific to PvP, some armor is very specific to PvE. As you build decks, you're eventually going to want at least six, one of each PvE element, right? Um, fire, earth, water, dark, and light. You're going to want to have one of those for each element, and you're going to want to have a PvP set, which um, includes things like all of your stuns, um, you know, your specific PvP gear if you have any. For example, this armor right here, the Raider armor, which I've actually pulled twice, luckily, would be, is not great for PvP. It reduces damage from elite monsters. This is fantastic raid armor, and so I'm working on it all the time, but I really want, what I would want this if I was gonna go like tank a world boss or something like that. For now, I don't get a ton of use out of this. Instead, I go for my more generic max HP up celestial armor. But that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing your build loadouts. I think e armor and accessories will become more important as we gain more of them, as we play the game more. You will want to specialize based on element or type of game you're playing. For now, I think a good starting point is focus on your weapons. Make sure you're boosting your element as much as you can. Okay, skills. Skills are a little bit easier. Basic skills, you only have three and their element changes based off of your main hand. So as long as you have a deck for each element, your basic skills will always be doing optimal damage to the enemies of the other element. So that one's really pretty easy. With your um, special skills, it does matter a little bit. They do have an element to them. So in my fire build, I don't currently have anything that scales off of fire. So I would just use like the ones I liked the most. If I wanted to boost my auto attack, damage I might think about something like frenzy charge which increases basic attack damage by another 15% for 10 seconds so I could like use this buff and then if I was manually playing not be using my my advanced skills while that buff was live things like this are what you think about um, in my dark build I would want shadow disc on probably because this is a you know darkness based attack these elements do not change based on the element of your main hand weapon that's the big deal here so swap them around if it's necessary based on your element and then your passives i mean use the best passives you have i use defense or i'm leveling it up i use parry and avenging fury because they're op that'll depend on your class let's talk next about familiars now this is a fire set so already the first thing i see wrong is i don't want my number one pet to be earth i'm gonna hit auto equip i'm gonna tell it to auto equip a fire element in my main slot at least at this point now, my fire pet will be the one doing the basic attacks, and you get quite a bit of damage from your pet's basic attack damage. When you equip a pet, you get all of these stats, and your pets give a ton of stats, and you get their active ability and passive ability. This ability at the bottom, that's for the little mini game. That's for pet arena, right? You get these two things. So I have an active ability from him that gives me immortality and heals me. It's freaking awesome, and raises fire attack. It's OP. It's one of the best pets in the game for tanks. And then I get Molten Lion's Heart. All elemental damage taken decreases proportional to the number of fire familiars equipped. Increases all elemental damage when HP is 20% or below. So, I will get minus 2% damage for every fire familiar I have equipped from my best fire element pet. That's interesting. It might mean that I might want to go to like this guy right here. You know, I call him Flubber. His actual name is Splisher. You know, he is giving me a heal, that's nice, but like really, 
I have somebody like, uh, oh, let's say Shrimpaler here. Shrimpaler can also give me a heal, and he decreases the skill cooldown of fire familiars I have. So that could be a useful option for me if I wanted the heal. Might, on the other hand, if I look at what his, you know, passive ability is, fire damage up. Okay, maybe Might is somebody I'd want to go for. And don't discount the three-star familiars in this case. You should be, at, once you're to the point in the game where you can be farming gold, you should be taking your three-star familiars and fusing them together. I know gold is tight. I'm currently under a million. I'm going to be farming gold again tonight. But look at our dragon boy right here. Uh, Draggle. I have gotten this guy to 10. He's the only one I have to 10. He gives fire attack plus 5%. Like, don't sleep on this. It might just be worth it. He's 21,000 CP. Splisher's 31,000. But still, I might just want to go like this. Boom. Get out of there, Splisher. I'll sacrifice 10k CP for an additional, what, 5% boost to all of my damage? That seems pretty good. And I could supplement him with some toys if I wanted to. His attack is also a fire attack, so I lose the heal. But I gain a big fire attack with a burn. Now, I do have a guy here like, you know, Stagthorn, who's just busted. At this point in the game, he's so much my best familiar that I don't think I would sacrifice him yet. But I hope that just kind of gives you an idea of how these elements play together and how I essentially sacrificed 20,000 CP here for a bunch of fire attack and optimizing my fire damage. Um, okay. That's it, guys. That's how equipment building works. I'm going to throw back onto the screen the, like, core three weapons here again, because that is, I think, the biggest takeaway. But look at the description of your familiars. Look at the description of your gear. Keep in mind all of those bonuses that you're getting. Just start stacking on top of each other. Look for good synergies and play around those four-star elemental weapons that I'm showing off right here. And boom, that's going to be the video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, for anybody wondering, like, the COVID sucks. Like, just doing a video is like, it, it taps me out. But Baby J did go to the hospital. He's home. He didn't even have to stay the night. They just had to give him those, like, good COVID drugs that open up your airway. So he is doing good. I wanted to give a little update there to the people who follow that. Um, and then, yeah, thank you guys for watching. It makes me feel good to do videos. So I like that I can be here talking to y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time. Peace.